friends. How's everybody doing? Good Saturday to you. Um, man, what a week it's been. What a week it's been. Um, so much uh, on the go and uh, lots of, uh, oh, just the snow alone. Just the cold and the snow here starting last Monday. Oh, Lord. We got about 10 inches of snow and it was just a it was just a crazy week um, so anyway um, what I wanted to do um, first of all thank you Billy from Philly for reaching out I really appreciate it um, I think it where he's gonna help me uh, with uh, dust collection and HVAC in my shop so the pressures can regulate it so I, I just, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, and just, uh, again, another another person from the community that just reaches out and just is like, hey, uh, I have some information if you're interested. And, and of course I was interested and uh, yeah, so um, another friend made you know, across the United States on the East Coast. Uh, so now I have people on the West Coast and people on the East Coast. Um, so anyway, it's it's quite a thrill. Uh, Healed Heart and Kim Wilson, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I hope you guys are feeling good and, and energized again. What I wanted to drop in and talk about um, is a, a, I'm actually in my bunker. I'm not at the shop. I'm really happy to be here. Everything's such a mess. Um, but I'm getting I'm getting picked up, uh, which is a good thing. And I uh, also um, there's a little space uh, back here which I cleaned up today, which I. Uh, I'm going to use as a, a sharpening and just, it's going to have a, a big thick hickory workbench area in it. And um, I take it back there, but there's no light back there right now. So I got to get it wired up for some light. Um, but uh, anyway, the reason for today is uh, a little bit of draw knife. I saw a fella on Facebook that was struggling with his draw knife and was asking for some guidance and I'm certainly no authority on a draw knife a draw knife is like a, it's a it's a journey everything is a journey <laughs> um, it's it's a bunch of time put in on on the tool um, I don't really know of anybody that just grabbed a draw knife and was like, hey, is an expert at it. Um, there are some really, really good uh, craftsmen that are just amazing on the uh, on YouTube. Uh, Paul Sellers is an exceptional cabinet maker from England that uh, he, he can he can just do anything. Um, there's uh, Coopers uh, from Scotland that I watch. Uh, Coopers make barrels. Um, just there, there's all kinds of stuff. There's uh, recreators. Uh, some folks that I watch. I don't recall the uh, the channel, but they uh, they recreate a colonial settlement and they make a bunch of stuff with crude hand tools, uh, froes, spoke shaves, rudimentary spoke shaves, draw knives, uh, splitting, riving, all kinds of stuff. So. Well, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, getting back to task, um, I wanted to uh, just throw out a couple of, of draw knife things, which I think I've covered before, but I don't think they can be overemphasized um, enough. Um, and the first thing is just, is just being sharp, having it be sharp. But uh, there's just some basics that I just think that, that you need to keep them in in your head and um, 
that I'm going to go over a little bit, but I've been using, I've also been using my draw knife um, extensively in the last year. Um, all these handles that I've been making and experimenting with have had to have heads on them. So the push to get better at, at hafting an axe head um, means getting better with the draw knife and developing new te techniques that can get uh, an axe head on a handle in minutes rather than hours. Um, so anyway, that said, the most, the absolute most important thing with the draw knife, oops, knock that sucker over. The absolute most important thing with the draw knife, I believe, is having a home for it. Um, in other words, you have a place you put it when you're done with it. Um, you get it up. I mean, you can see my bench here. My bench is a disaster, but there's with this, uh, it doesn't get set down with the tools when I'm working with it. I have a little stool and I put all of the, I separate them out when I'm standing and I put it down um, so that this edge uh, won't get knocked around or get a screwdriver hit it or something. You really want to try to keep your edge pristine. Welcome to my messy workbench, which is going to be a thing of the past. Now, you don't need a lot of fancy, fancy schmancy stuff for your draw knife. You can, you can rehab your draw knife and tune it up with two things, um, maybe three, depending on what kind of condition you get it in. Um, but anyway, the, the key really is to buy something, if you're going on eBay or whatnot, is to get something that's not too far gone. In other words, it, the, when I got this, there were no chips in it. Um, it was just dull. I mean, it was sharp compared to uh, a knife in a silverware drawer, but it's not sharp enough for uh, really, for, for handle work, basically. Um, this thing really needs to be sharp. I mean, did I mention that it needs to be sharp? It needs to be sharp. And that doesn't happen um, overnight. I mean, you have to get it in the ballpark, but it, even, you know, sharpening edged instruments, it's a regimen. It really is. Uh, the sharper you can have something, the, the better the tool is going to work for you. Anyway, this, I don't know what brand this is, but this is an 800 grit diamond plate. Um, from Walmart. Now, if you want to get uh, a solid um, diamond plate, that's even better. But it's small. I don't. What I like to do is be able to hold it in your hand, uh, and that that helps you with your sharpening. So anyway, the first thing you'll do is turn this over and flatten this whole back surface. Now if you're far gone, you might need uh, something around 320, you know, or if, if you need anything below 320, it's something that I wouldn't even consider buying unless it's a tool that, you know, has sentimental value. Um, it's just going to take you a lot more time to get sharp, like keenly sharp. Um, so anyway, the first thing I do is flatten this guy. And once you feel like that's flat, then you come over, let me scoot up a little bit closer. What I do, and this is, this is uh, per Liam Hoffman. This is how he sharpens his draw knife. So 
I figured if it was good enough for him, it's good enough for me. What you do is this part of the bevel, bust that down just a little bit. Um, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me wipe this off a little bit. You're not going for the whole width of that bevel. You're going for, you know, you're going for, can you see that? If you look at the mirror finish, it's right out here on the tip and it's right there where I've been busting that, that angle. That helps you with your stone when you go to hone it. Um, it creates a touch of a dip and I'll cover that here in a second. Uh, so you bust that edge and I'm not going to do it with this because this is all this needs is honing and I hone this before I start and after I'm done more than likely unless I'm in a big hurry or too tired to mess with it but you gradually build this sharpening um, you get it just gets sharper over time it really does and working on your workpiece it gets easier and easier and easier um, so I'll take out the next component once you get oh I need to go over this again so you busted down and and we're not talking like we're just talking uh, we're not talking like really working it like you're you know like you're using sandpaper uh, you're just relieving this a little bit um, and you'll know you'll know it you'll feel it so as you then you're gonna start on your edge and I'll do it with the uh, Arkansas stone this is the component this is a honing stone. Um, I don't really know what grid it is, but uh, it, it, it essentially it polishes the blade and you're basically polish, you keep polishing that edge. Backside, front side, backside, front side, back, you know. Um, and then just an old leather belt to strop the curl, carefully uh, take that curl off of the edge. So I, I, I just have to imagine that I'm using my 800 grit. Um, so you just kind of have to, you know, this is how I do it. And, you know, somebody might be like, you're crazy, you know, you're, um, but I've had very good results with this. So And I don't even have to go in circular motions anymore. Going in circular motions helps you, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to feel this angle here. So I am busting, actually I'm busting this corner down, which I don't really need to do because it's already busted down. And eventually over time, you know, at some point, it won't be anytime soon, but at some point, you know, it might have to be reground to establish the original angle of attack. But anyway, the reason I like the water stone and you have the concavity of this, you start out on that angle and you can feel the water will form a suction. And so you can feel yourself right on that angle. And I'm not pushing hard can go in circles. I prefer to go straight across, but I can, I can feel myself, I can feel the stone. That's why I go with the smaller stones so you can feel what you're doing. And I'm just working, working that edge.
and it's it's just something that you have to figure it out. Um, you'll know when you get to your workpiece if you were successful or not. I mean, you can you can watch the greatest person on YouTube do this with the best advice, but if you can't come up with the goods and you're, you know, if you end up frustrated with what you're doing, then it's, it's sharpening. You're not, you got to go back to the drawing board and develop something that works, you know? So anyway, this is, this is crazy. And really when you do this all the time, it doesn't take much at all. It just doesn't. You're just... Basically... Giving it a little love before you start. You can feel the uh, the water grab. It was actually grabbing a little too much, so I turned my stone over. And you'll start to see start to see the water get black and gray. That means you're cutting or honing. Actually, honing is cutting. See how that water is gray, and we're done with the honing. But Arkansas, small Arkansas stone or a wet stone that you can hold, and what I think this was like eight or ten bucks at Walmart, and you're you're straight business. You're sharp as you're sharp, sharp, sharp. Now here's that belt. Um, I actually have a Tormek back there, which I will. Um, polish this um, it has a it's a slow rpm sharpening system with a with a, a wet wheel and a uh, a leather wheel that strops and you use uh, polishing compound but what i used to use is just this and you don't want to get too crazy with it you're just trying to that curl off and it doesn't take a lot when you're talking you know sharper than a razor everybody says razor sharp but I want better than razor sharp because when you're super sharp you can do so much more with your workpiece Okay, let's see how we did. We put our sharpening stuff somewhere else. <laughs> now I've got my stool and I'm going to lay it down on my stool. And it's probably going to be the only thing that I put on there, but then we'll get, we'll grab a piece of wood and we'll see what's up. also take big bits. See what's happening though? Nope. Now I'm going the other way. I'm 
lot of it, you have to read the grain of the wood. But one of the big problems with, see how my bench is moving? That's the next thing on the list. You want zero movement with your bench. If you've got moving, you aren't going to be able to effectively get these big hunks of wood off. So my plan is, but this is cutting very well. This is cutting super well. The This is so smooth right here. And, and you can, it takes, you know, thousands. We're, we're in the thousands here. That's what I love about the draw knife is that you can take extremely big hunks of wood and then get down and do some really intricate fine work with it as well. I need to see how see how this is sort of splayed out. Uh, and this is fairly beefy, but this needs more. This needs so much more. Um, for taking big hunks of uh, um, wood off of a handle. Uh, the amount of force that you're grabbing, you know, because when, when the bench moves, uh, you have a give, and then the, the cutting edge hesitates, and you lose all your momentum. So what's going to happen is down in here, on these two buys right here, I'm going to put three-quarter inch plywood and then put some... I've got some uh, landscaping pavers. I'm gonna put a lot of weight on this bench and have it go nowhere. The other thing I wanted to cover real quick is how to practice with this thing. So if you have a bench that doesn't do this, see how my, uh, I just don't want that. Uh, that's definitely gotta improve. But the, you know, to, it takes a while to develop finesse, and the finesse is all tied up in the, in the sharpness of it. Being able to take little tiny bits of wood, and in some instances this really, this eliminates a spoke shave, and if you can eliminate a tool, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Also learning how to read wood grain is, is important. But see, I'm taking kind of big pieces there. And now I'm taking, taking just little tiny shavings there. Literally, um, just contouring, and it's it, it took a while to get there, you know. And everybody's got, you know, everybody learns stuff at different at a different pace. One thing that I came up with um, uh, when I was uh, really needing to increase the speed on uh, hafting axe heads, um, especially with the way grain runs ahead. Sometimes you can just shank off a big old piece and you know, you, you're you just dead in the water. Um, I kind of developed this little technique. Um, I started out with, and what got me into it was, I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna think outside the box here for a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to pick up these rasps and see what happens. <laughs> it even falls over with the rasp. So the bench is got to get fixed up. So I started rasping and I thought you know this is rough but I'm as 
far as shaping this, I am controlling what's going on with this rasp uh, more evenly, more consistently um, at times. I mean, every tool has its place in time, but I'm, I'm working a longer area in this contour. And I'm actually kind of liking it. I'm actually really liking it. So, but then I thought, you know, that's really rough. So what do I do? Do I take a file, like I was taught, and then work in the sandpaper or, or whatever? And I was like, you know what? That would be good practice with the draw knife. So you can just practice with your draw knife uh, you've got this rough surface, so just take your draw knife and smooth that out. Take out your draw knife marks and make it super smooth. I've taken very little. And I've been really pleased with that. My that increased, um, or actually, I mean, decreased the amount of time spent hafting. I mean, yes, see that? I mean, I'm able to do that, but I just, the rasp just gave me, I felt like I had more control and I was I'm working areas that are this wide instead of this wide but that's really good practice with the draw knife um, you know you make these marks that go in quite a ways and then with your draw knife you can remove them and what that does is give you gives you a very gauged uh, scenario for taking your wood down. Uh, whereas if I'm just working with a draw knife, which I love doing by the way, I'm not necessarily uh, as confident as I am with this because I know. I'm taking off so much. Once I remove the marks on this, it, that's a consistent uh, uh, removal. So I thought that was interesting. So then the next thing I thought about was, I was like, you know, if I like this rasp, rasp so much, uh, what about using a horseshoe? Uh, a person that shoes horses rasp for uh, hooves. So you can see the difference. It's, it's extreme. And so and the aggressiveness this is pretty extreme as well, but the thing I like about this is it's flat, it's machined flat, so as you work into something like this, you're getting flat, you're getting super flat. Sometimes you like you have to read your wood. You have to see how it started hanging up here. Oh, poor little spoke shape fell down. So that's cutting better. But again, it's the same thing. And you have a nice big, you have a nice big coarse file.
but look how fast. Look how fast that's going. And the thing that this is going to help too is as you're learning with your draw knife, if you have a horseshoeing file, you're going to have that accuracy right out of the gate. So all you're doing is is learning how to use a file, which is, I think, definitely easier than using a, a, a draw knife. So then you still have your coarseness marks on your wood. So then you come in. And you really have to, using a draw knife is, is immediate. You have to, as things change with the wood, because the wood changes as you go down, you have to adapt your angle and the pressure. It's, it's, there's a lot of coordination that has to happen with the draw knife. But look how, I mean, that's, I mean, that's ready for finish. That's, that's beautiful. Now you can also go the wrong direction where you get up underneath something and, and shank it off, which isn't good. And I'm not as big of a fan as having the bevel down like you would have a chisel. I like the bevel up in a pairing action. See how that bench gives? And it just completely kills, it just kills your momentum with your draw knife. Um, when I get this bench squared, or squared away, um, we'll, we'll take a big hunk of, uh, hickory and we'll rough something out in, in short order with this, but I've, this has got to go away for sure. I know I've said that. So anyway, sharp draw knife and a horseshoe file, and you could augment this horseshoe file with the spoke shave. The principles are really the same. Whatever spoke shave you choose, uh, you've got to get it sharp. You've just got to get it like as sharp as you can humanly get it. Um, so that's really, there's a lot of skills going on here. There's the skill of using the draw knife there's the sharpening skills, there's the skill of using the spoke shave, the experience of reading the wood. So all of this stuff has to come together. And so just be patient and um, don't let failure ruin your fun because this is a lot of fun and it's worthwhile. I think we're going through what I've been reading. Uh, it's a bit of a, of a of an axe renaissance, which I really am really, it's really neat. Oh, do you like my, my file handle that Jay Daniels made me from it's bird's eye maple. That's pretty nifty. eh? He made me another one out of uh, old growth redwood. Wasn't that nice? Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. A very, very thoughtful person. Check out his channel. He's a good man. And has a heck of a lot of knowledge on axes and cutting wood and fire protection and just general living, living well. Uh, so anyway, I hope that was, I hope that has some value. I hope uh, that everyone's doing well. And um, let's see. <laughs> I hope that gets it. Maybe that'll get it. Uh, let's uh, let's have a good weekend and uh, just keep spreading. 
let's have a good weekend and and keep up keep up the positivity again i don't i'm i'm gonna say thank you to you guys every freaking video because it's just so awesome it's just it's amazing i have no words um yeah <laughs> and me being speechless is is something else uh, more on the way more on the way i am dying to get this uh samira bar on my 372 and at least fire up my 372 and put it in a little wood out in the backyard but it's been so darn cold so lots of stuff going on and i'm still trying to crank the content and and keep pushing forward it's it's just uh things have changed you know as far as just the desire to keep pushing the content and to keep in contact with you guys and um you know let's rock it turn it to 11 and i'll see you soon <laughs>